السلام على مشاهدينا في العالم العربي أينما كنتم أهلا وسهلا بكم من كاليفورنيا نلتقي في ممنوع هذا المساء الدكتور القس جون ماك آثر هذا الرجل الذي أثار ما أثار من المشاكل يقول البعض أو من القضايا التي لم يجرؤ بعض المتحدثين من الوعاظ المسيحيين على الخوض فيها بشكل مباشر يتلاقه البعض بأسلوب نقدي قوي يتقبله الآخر على كونه التزم بتعليم الإنجيل كما هو ينزل علينا ضيف في ممنوع هذا المساء Hello Pastor, thank you for allowing us to be in your campus and to be our guest in Memnua, forbidden. I'm very honored, thank you, Ahmed. Sat7 is pleased to have you as our guest in this show to speak to millions of our viewers in the Middle East and North Africa. Well, that's a great privilege for me. I'm, I'm very honored, thank you. And uh, already you have a book, or more than one book written in Arabic. How did you do that, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't do that, but uh, some uh, some Christian friends in the uh, Arabic world felt that um, it would be good to translate the books into Arabic, and that's that's not unusual for us mm -hmm. because the the books that we write are biblical books. They're not they're, they're not cultural books, so they're not uh, American as such. They deal with the scriptures, the holy scriptures, the Bible, and so they get translated into a lot of languages. I, I have to say, I was very, very thankful to the Lord that mm -hmm. they could be translated into the Arabic language because I have a great burden to see the Arabic people reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I was very, very grateful for that. Is it a matter of love or is it a matter you want to just convert Muslims to Christianity? Is it a, any political agenda behind that? I don't have a political agenda behind anything I do. Uh, I, I'm a part of the kingdom of God, which is not a part of this world. Mm. Uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God didn't have a political motive. I don't have a political motive. I, I want to see people uh, forgiven. Mm -hmm. I want to see people enter eternal heaven. And the way is through Jesus Christ. It's, it's the love of the souls of men and women that motivates me. And I think that's what motivates God. And that's why Christ offered his life. As you know, Pastor, the, um, the word mission in, uh, in the Arabic language, in, in an Arab Muslim context, used um, or understood in a very negative way. Can you clarify a little bit uh, that uh, the, the, the deep meaning of mission and why you want to convert people to Christianity? Or to Jesus? Yeah, I, I think the word mission for us is defined by Christ. Mm -hmm. Because he said, I have come to seek and save the lost. His mission was to deliver people from the kingdom of Satan, deliver people from the kingdom of darkness, deliver people from hell, and bring people to heaven. He didn't do that politically. He didn't do that militarily. He didn't coerce people. He didn't force people. He loved people. He offered the gospel. That defines the, the mission. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the end in mind is an eternal life, an eternal life of joy and bliss in heaven. But contrary to what Christians have done through history, and we have to admit that so-called Christians, not true like Christians. Colonialism, colonialism, and before that you have the yeah. Crusades. Well, and you have liberation theology in a more mm -hmm. modern form. Any form of coercion, any form of manipulation, any form of politicizing the Christian message is heretical, it is foreign to what Christ came to do. He's the model. So, some they may say, John, sorry to interrupt you, that uh, some they may say and see that Western, uh, they think they're the only people, they know God, and that's why they're sending missionaries to China, to Muslims, to Arabs, to other nations. Why do, why do you do that? Why you don't respect other people's beliefs and uh, system of beliefs? Why, why well, you're sending missionaries and changing cultures? Well, first of all, mm -hmm. this isn't to change culture. This is to see people saved from the judgment of God for their sin. And by the way, the message was delivered to us from the Jews originally. Mm. It was the Jews originally that were the repository into which God placed His truth. Uh, the Apostle Paul, Jew, Pharisee, the Pharisees, zealous for the law, 
He says that God gave the Jews the covenants, the promises, the Messiah. Everything was delivered to the Jews. What we have, we have because Semitic people brought it to us, because the sons then of Abraham. Then you're saying we, the, the Semitic people, we, the people of the Middle East, we came as a missionary or took the message from God to you, Western. Now, there's no question about that. After this break, we'll come back. بعد هذا الفاصل سنعود في الحديث عن اليهود واليهودية وإسرائيل اليوم فابقوا معنا في ممنوع It's so typical It usually starts like this I'm basically a good person It's the idea that you believe in God and you're a good person as over against a bad person which means um, given a 24-hour day, most hours in that day you're not committing a violent crime. It's the way it works. It's all about uh, stacking up the hours. How many hours a day do I commit crime? So uh, it's a rare day when I do a crime, but there are a lot of other days I don't do a crime, so I'm basically good. Or. Um, how many hours a month am I raping someone? Oh, it's occasional, but the rest of the time I'm, I'm basically a good person. That's how it works. They sort of balance off the timetable. And we tend to also to balance off our sin with something good. You know, hey, look, I support my family. I know, I know, I support my family. Yeah, I, I, I know I stumble once in a while and I'm unfaithful to my wife and I cheat on my income tax, but I'm telling you this, I, I take my kids, you know, to the Saturday Little League. I'm a good dad, really. Yeah, God wouldn't keep me out of heaven. After all, I believe in God and I, I hey, I believe in Jesus and I'm basically a good person. And of course, that's the biggest lie in religion. You have to forget in order to buy that lie that God only justifies the ungodly. So it's not until you're ungodly and you know it. You're already ungodly, you just don't know it. But when you come to the knowledge that you are ungodly, then there's hope that you could be justified. But not until. إذا نعود للحديث عن موضوع مثير للجدل خاصة وأن الحركات الإنجيلية في الغرب في الولايات المتحدة معروفة بمناصرتها لإسرائيل هذا الموضوع الذي يثير ما يثير من الجدل. جون يوجلي ذا ويسترن تشيرشز ذي سبورت مودرن إسرائيل إسرائيل إن ماني وايز أند فور ريزن أو فور نو ريزنز. هاو دو يو سي ذا مودرن إسرائيل؟ Modern Israel is uh, under the judgment of God. What do you mean by that? I mean they have rejected their Messiah. That's an unusual uh, statement for an evangelical American. But that's a biblical truth. This but you, you may be judged for that. This is you, you, you may lose your support. This is not my opinion. This is the Word of God. People, they will not like you anymore. <laughs> Um, I have to be faithful to God who mm. judges me and uh, whom I love supremely. While I, I, I love people and, and I don't want to needlessly offend them, Jesus, when He was rejected by the Jewish nation, said, Behold, your house is left to you desolate. And He said, It will not change until you see Me coming in My glory. That means that the history of Israel is the history of divine judgment. Do we love the Jewish people? Yes. Do, do, we, do we want to support their right to exist? Yes. But we, we also know that in the future God will redeem Israel because that's what the prophet said, but that's future. Now they are under the judgment of God until they look on the one, Zechariah says, whom they've pierced mm -hmm. and mourn for him as an only son. Then a fountain of blessing will be poured out to them. How about uh, the Palestinians? I feel that the Palestinians are to be loved in the same way that the Jews are to be loved. That is, but we don't see that in many evangelical circles. No, I agree. I think, I think or Christian the, in the West, let's say. Sure, that, yeah. and I think what's happened is that the evangelical world mm. has taken on Israel as this as if they were 
the favored son and, and needed to be pr protected in some special way, when the truth of the matter is God will preserve them, but he will preserve them in judgment until they, they look on the one they rejected. Uh, Mike, let, let, let me ask you a simple, direct question. Do you love Palestinians? Do you care for Palestinians? Do you feel sorry for what happened to them? Lots of them, they lost their houses and everything they... Yeah, I, I have been in the Middle East many, mm. many times. I have been to Lebanon. I have been to Syria. I have been to Jordan. I've met with some of the important people there. I've been to Egypt. My heart reaches out with the same gospel love to them that it does to any any person. I look at the television, I see all the upheaval starting, you know, with the Arab Spring. I see the horrors of all the mm -hmm. loss of life in Syria. This is heartbreaking because these are people perishing without the knowledge of Christ, without the gospel, without hope. I don't, look, in, in Christ is neither Jew nor Gentile. Mm. The, the, this is a gospel message that is to be taken to every creature in the world, Jesus said, every, every person in the world. That's our mission. And we don't make distinctions in nations. That, that's, that's foreign that's a good point. to the New Testament. Can, can, can you clarify this? What do you mean by you don't make distinction by the, the nations? The gospel advances hmm. one soul at a time without distinction. Without distinction. But the image of the Christian societies through centers, there have been a lot racist societies. I'm not here to... I'm not here to defend Christian society. Hmm. Uh, understand this. Uh, people counterfeit what's real, mm -hmm. and Satan most eagerly counterfeits what's real. So there will be counterfeit Christianity everywhere. Even starting in the New Testament, mm -hmm. when Paul established a church, and very soon Judaizers or false teachers came in and corrupted that to create a false kind of Christianity. All through church history, false Christians misrepresenting true gospel and true gospel love and the heart of God and the heart of Christ have mischaracterized Christianity, done all kinds of things. Mm. There are revolutions fought in the name of Christianity, uh, both in ancient times and in modern times. That's not true Christianity. True Christianity is not, it's not a political system. Mm. It's not a social system. It's not a cultural system. It, tr it transcends all of that. But it you get involved in political activism in the 60s. Me? Yes, the civil rights movement. And you, they I, made you pay a fine. I was never involved in political activism. What I was doing, mm -hmm. I went to the South mm. when uh, there was upheaval between the black and the white communities in America. I went to Tell the me South. about that experience, please. I was preaching the gospel mm -hmm. in the schools, in the black schools. When, uh, when it wasn't allowed for white people and black people to be together. You across right, the line. Exactly. I crossed the line. But I don't have a line in the Bible. I don't see a line. And if my government tells me or, or society tells me not to do something God commands me to do, I have to obey God. That's what the early apostles did. So I was preaching. Sure, they arrested me. They took me down to the jail. They took my money. The pressure was so great that a local pastor mm. who was crossing the line was, uh, had a nervous breakdown, had some kind of mental collapse, dove out of a window, killed himself. Mm. I was with a group of the main leaders, uh, black sort of political leaders. I, I happened to be in a meeting. I, I was there to, to preach, but I met with them. I was there when Martin Luther King was assassinated. Mm -hmm. I was sitting with them. Yep. I read so, that I lived, book, yeah. uh, so I lived through all of that. I don't, I don't recognize those social distinctions. Mm. If you were to walk into Grace Community Church today, our church, it would look like Los Angeles. What, what would yeah, that this mean? This picture, please, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you walk into Grace Community Church, yeah. you would see Arabic. People, you would see uh, Armenian people, you'd see Russian people, you would see all kinds of Asian people. It looks like the, the, the mixture of Los Angeles. And that's how the body but of were Christ... But you, do you consider yourself a troublemaker in the 60s? No. No, I wasn't stirring up anything. Mm. I wasn't rallying people to march on something or protest something. In fact, uh, th this may really get me in trouble. Um, 
I, I don't think there's any grounds in the Bible for any kind of revolution. Mm -hmm. Because Scripture says, be subject to the powers that be there or ordained of God. You may not like them. You may not like that authority. But Christians, true Christians, don't start revolutions. They are quiet. They live peaceable lives. They accept the authorities. They pray for those who rule over them. They give honor to the ruler, even if he's not a righteous ruler, even mm -hmm. if he's a bad ruler, because we don't disrupt society. That's not our message. Our message is the gospel of Jesus Christ brings forgiveness and eternal life to anyone who believes in him, and it's one soul at a time. It's one not soul a political at a time. movement. Yep. John, how do you see, uh, um, how do you understand the, the growth of uh, the church in, 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 the, in, in the different nations like South Korea, like China these days? Like societies, they lived under communism like Chinese, and they're coming to Christ by thousands, by millions, some people they say. Yeah, there could be as many as 150 million Christians, maybe more in China. Hmm. Um, one answer to that is persecution. Persecution runs the false Christians out because if you're a fake... Do you pray for persecution uh, in the States? I, I pray for whatever God chooses to do to refine the church and persecution's part of it. Mm -hmm. I've been to Soviet, former Soviet Union maybe 10 times. Uh, I never saw a liberal theologian in Russia or uh, Kazakhstan or the Ukraine because persecution doesn't allow for, uh, for people pretending to be a Christian. Why would you pretend to be something that would get you sent to Siberia? Yes. So the same thing is in, is in China. But the you, problem they take over always after what? Pardon? The liberals. Yeah, well, well you, you, you look at Europe. Europe yeah. had all this freedom, uh -huh. and, and the church is destroyed across Europe by liberal theologians. False Christians have replaced the true ones because they could flourish in that environment. You, you go to China, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. Communist persecutions, Christians are killed. We have a faculty member right here at the school whose, whose parents and brother were killed right before his eyes in China, mm -hmm. and he's here. Go to Japan. Japan had no persecution. Japan had 250 mission organizations working there. They had complete freedom, very few Christians. So from the human side, persecution purifies out the false Christians, and you have the real thing left. But that that's for God to decide. You know, yeah, His sovereign yeah. purposes unfold in that way. And that will lead me to the other question, a question after the break. نخرج في هذا الفاصل ثم نعود في ممنوع. I would just like to encourage the congressman because at the very beginning he said that in his faith he believes in the Genesis account. And I think he'll first chapter. himself. First chapter. First chapter, sure. Uh, stick with that first chapter. Six <laughs> days of creation and God rested. Made, That's what and, the scripture and, and says. Made, and made everything perfect. That's right. And then the fall. You've got to get to chapter three sooner or later. Well, I don't want to get to chapter is. three. Well, you have to. I mean, you're trying to. Well, that, you, think, you think I have to. See, that's the well, problem. And that's my point. <laughs> That's know. my point. Well, I want to know why he's a congressman if he isn't in there trying to help re uh, reduce the effects of what happened in Chapter 3, which is the story of the Jeez. fall. No, but see, th this is, uh, Larry, this is the key point. I believe in God deeply, and already now I'm being questioned. And that's the danger, because the gentleman who just spoke has his religious view and questions mine. You are going to raise such a huge challenge if we start getting in this debate, because it's intolerant. And I think that's what this discussion is leading to. I, I just need to defend myself. I certainly didn't intend that. Uh, you said you believed in Genesis you one. You questioned why he's a congressman. And I just said you you should stick with the conviction about Genesis one, and you have the creation account right there. نعود في حوارنا مع القص الدكتور ماك آثر حول شكل من أشكال الكنائس التي تنتشر أو اللاهوت الذي ينتشر ويسمى بإنجيل الثروة. جون، what do you think about this prosperity gospel movement؟ Well, the prosperity gospel has nothing to do with the Bible at all. Mm -hmm. um, 
It is to attract people, I think, uh, to give them what they already want mm -hmm. uh, in their natural condition. Everybody wants prosperity. Everybody wants more money. Everybody wants health. Everybody wants success. Everybody wants some kind of popularity. Uh, so it, it is a perverted message to win people. Mm -hmm. And I'll be so bold as to say uh, the people who prosper most are the people who are selling the false gospel. Uh, if you look at their lives, uh, you know, you're going to see them flying around in jets and driving fancy cars and living in big houses mm -hmm. because people are sending them money on the pretense that they're going to get health and wealth and success and their life is going to change and that only benefits them because it's not true. If you say it in one word, what is prosperity gospel? It's a false gospel. This is two words. One, I want a one word. A lie. A lie. Pastor John Piper said that's paganism. Well, yeah, it, paganism is a good word for it. It's paganism. It's, in, it's a false religion. You have been nicer than you there. You're saying, he say he was like... Uh, yeah, you, you can use either word, <laughs> lie or paganism. <laughs> that's a strong statement. It's a lie. It's, it's promising it people It means like that, satanic. Yeah, it's prom well, it, it's, certainly it comes from the kingdom of darkness. When you promise people something mm -hmm. that you cannot deliver, that's a lie, right? If I tell you, you send me your money, and you sow your money with me like seed, mm -hmm. and you'll be healthy, that's a lie. And you'll be but wealthy. But why is growing, and why, like, we see... Because it's a message that desperate people want to hear. Do you think those people who attend those churches that are deceived, or they deserve that? Uh, well, everybody who doesn't know the truth is deceived at mm -hmm. one level or another, but yes, they're deceived. But the thing that's so dire about it is it preys on the most desperate people. It victimizes the, the people who are poor, mm -hmm. the people who are without resources, the people who are ill, the people who have severe problems they can't solve and, and don't have the the, the strength to solve them. It, it, it literally turns them into victims that prospers the person who's making the false promises. Um, I, I would love to, to go deeper in your personal life, your family, uh, your kids, your grandkids. Mm -hmm. um, are they still around your ministry? Do they help you? Are they involved in what you do? I have four children mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, uh, two boys and two girls. They're married. So mm -hmm. they have spouses, and uh, the, uh, all of them love Christ. They all serve in our church. All of them are very active in our church. Uh, we have 15 grandchildren. The oldest Good. one is 23, and the youngest is three. How it feels to see this family involved in the gospel with this good number? You know, I'm so thankful because uh, all of the grandkids uh, are in the church. I have baptized my way about halfway through the ranks mm -hmm. of these kids who, who profess Christ and are part of our ministry. Uh, a number of them have gone to college here, the older ones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, th this is the great joy of my life to see the Lord save them uh, to, to bring the John, gospel. do you play with the kids? Yeah. Uh, in fact, yesterday... Some people, they can't see you playing or laughing or telling oh, jokes. Yesterday, I spent... Let me think now. I spent four hours with my three youngest grandchildren. Mm. Um, uh, w one of them is nine, one of them is seven, and little Eloise is three. And uh, I s took them to get some ice cream. I, I played with them at the house. Do they make you laugh? Yeah, they make me laugh. Yeah, They make me very happy. It's that unconditional love, mm. and it's the knowledge that I have that their mother and father are raising them to know Christ and love Christ and serve Christ. And I see that. They, they, they sing little Chris, Christian songs. They tell me Bible verses. I heard you questions. used to be a singer. No, you, when you started <laughs> ministry, you used to sing. Yeah, I used to sing. Yeah, when I was in college, I... Uh, I'm not going to ask you to sing tonight. No, 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 please. <laughs> I used to sing when I was in college to earn mm. some money as a kind of a backup singer on recordings. And I used to sing uh, sometimes at church. Yeah. I would love to move There's to... There's not a lot of demand for my singing. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you're a good friend to and with Larry King. How did you develop or he developed this yeah. relationship 
with based in lots of respect, in my knowledge. It was 9-11. Mm -hmm. When 9-11 happened, he got a hold of me, his office got a hold of me and said, would you come down? I, I want to ask you, because he knew and his producers knew mm -hmm. who I was, and he asked me, what is the lesson? He, that was the first time on CNN. I'd been on some other programs, but the first time on his, he said, what is the lesson of this? What is the lesson of this? And I said, um, the lesson of this is so you're going to die and you don't know when. Mm -hmm. We don't be, control our lives. Couldn't be, it could have been a train wreck. Could have mm -hmm. been a plane crash. The lesson, the lesson is not a lesson about terrorism. The mm -hmm. lesson is a lesson about death. You're not in control of your death. You better be ready. And then he asked me a second question. He said, what about that two-year-old baby at the bottom of the mm -hmm. tower? What happened to that baby? And I said, instant heaven. Instant heaven. That little one was taken into the presence of God. And that struck him that I had such confidence to say that mm. and that I pointed out the fact that... You, you that don't give in uh, diplomatic answers with Larry King. I, I watched lots of your uh, <laughs> interviews. Well, you know, we struck up a friendship mm. and um, I, I really cared for him. Uh, you know, he's, a, he's a really engaging uh, interviewer. And he, he really does engage with you. He's not distant. He, oh, you feel like he's with, yeah, with all of and, his heart. And, and, and he would always get me back because he knew I would give him a straight answer. Because we I would love and forbidden to have him as a guest. Yeah, yeah, and he would be a great guest. He would be a great Maybe guest. one day. Maybe one day, yeah. But uh, I think my honesty mm -hmm. made me... Uh, um, a good interview because he could play off of that and he could get somebody else to disagree and then we could have some fireworks and he mm. liked that and eventually it, and he it, knows how to do it oh yeah and if <laughs> I didn't it, it, if I didn't give him the answer he wanted he would say now wait a minute John you believe that, that somebody who doesn't know Jesus is going to go to hell right yes I mean he'd put the words <laughs> in my mouth <laughs> but we had a relationship and I, I care for his soul and uh, I, I, I wish he would come to faith in Christ. I still pray for that. For Amen. إذا نخرج في هذا الفاصل ثم نعود في حوار شيق يقودنا إلى تفاصيل عديدة أخرى. فابقوا معنا في ممنوع. How did John MacArthur do you react to intelligent design as opposed to creationism as Dr. Richards separates them? Yeah, well, I think intelligent design is the only possible scientific position to hold because we have intelligence in the universe. It has to come from intelligence. Because we have complexity, it has to come from complexity. The silver bullet, Larry, is DNA. Before an understanding of DNA, uh, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of belief in evolution. It was like the emperor's new clothes. It was really naked but thought it was dressed up. DNA has, I think, spelled the end of traditional naturalistic evolution, which essentially says complexity comes out of simplicity. It can't happen. The silver bullet is not a single example of reproduction leading to an increased amount of genetic material necessary to produce a more complex organism has ever happened. As someone religion, religion though, you can't prove Adam and Eve, can you? Oh, I, don't, I don't think you can prove Adam and Eve, except that you know somebody so was there believe, to begin. You believe it. Yeah, well, we're, we're talking about two different things. Intelligent design is the only rational way to view right. the universe. Somebody but intelligent that, made it. Religion does, does and it who that you, intelligence is. Does it ponder you who made the intelligence? Who well, created I, the creator? I accept the Bible mean. as the source, the authoritative source that tells me it was God. And something or someone has to be eternal and the Bible says it is God who is the eternal one. Back to Larry King experience. One of the discussion really, I went to YouTube and there's thousands of viewers for that episode. Evolution, creation, intelligent design. I want to ask you about intelligent design. What do you think of, of this? I think it's obvious that an intelligent mind designed the world. Let mm -hmm. me just give you the latest, okay? This is, this is brand new, six mm -hmm. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Six weeks ago, and I just talked to scientists involved in this. Six weeks ago, they discovered that the DNA code can be read backwards and tell a full story. In other words, we knew that the DNA code, which is all the information in a cell that makes the cell function, 
could be read left to right. Now we know that it can be read and has to be read back the other way. Mm. The, this is the equivalent, listen to this, of three volumes of War and Peace novel, which would be 3,600 pages. You could read it from left to right, oh. and it would be mm -hmm. the normal way we read in English. The Without, opposite way of reading in Arabic or right. Hebrew. Okay, but you could, you could go to the end of it mm -hmm. without changing any letters. You could read it backwards and it would tell a different novel. That's the complexity of the DNA. And how one do they way, read it? One way it mm -hmm. is one code without changing anything. The other way it is a completely different code that informs completely the function of that cell. The complexity of that mm. is so incomprehensible that a man would be an idiot to say there's no intelligent designer. It's impossible. The, the question is, intelligent design makes sense, mm. but it doesn't make enough sense. Because then you have to say, who is the intelligence? Who's and the, the answer is, there's only one possible answer. Whoever is the intelligence is the creator of the universe. But why some atheist, oh, atheist scientists, lots of them, not all of them, they still defending evolution when they will tell you, ah, it's not Darwinism anymore, yeah. we changed Darwinism a lot, but we don't accept... Uh, Easy to uh, answer. Antigen design. Easy to answer. Romans 1. They mm -hmm. suppress the truth. In Are they afraid of the intelligent design theory? They're afraid of the designer. Not the theory. Not the theory. They're afraid of the designer. They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. But in they other accused words, you one time in that video, in that uh, discussion, you were nicer talking to the lady, the scientist, mm -hmm. and the guy next to you. But they, both of them they accused you being radical and tolerant. You know, radical and intolerant would be not to care about their eternal destiny. Intolerant would be to be indifferent to the fact that they are without God, without mm. hope in the world, and headed toward eternal judgment. That would be unloving and intolerant. Uh, I am passionate that people believe in God, because if, if you don't believe in God, you have no hope. You don't hate them, do you? You love them. Mm. That's honesty. What's the most honest? What's the most loving thing I can do? Be honest. I mean, if there's a guy, when they tell you radical and fundamentalist in a negative way, what do you feel? First of all, we have to start with this premise: mm. they love their sin. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They love their sin. They suppress the truth in order to maintain their sinful lives. This this is not an intellectual decision. This is a moral decision. They don't an they, emotional decision. Yeah, but it's based on the choices they want to make morally. It's based on the way they want to live. Mm -hmm. You can take the greatest atheistic scientist in the world with the finest mind. His intelligence would force him to believe in God, but his morality doesn't want that. So he, he bends toward his moral choices. He doesn't want to judge giving a code that he has to adhere to and pronouncing judgment on him when he violates it. He doesn't want that. I was astonished recently I was um, reading about the first man walked to the moon. The first thing he did when he arrived to the moon, he took the Lord's Supper. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that's because he was, he, he was saying there has to be a God. And he was so thankful to Jesus. He was so thankful to Jesus. He would acknowledge that that God is the God uh, of Scripture, and that he is incarnate in Jesus Christ and he's giving honor to Christ. Do you still believe that God created heaven and earth in six days? That's what the Bible says. And since God was the only one there, I have to take his word for it. But you said it's not really 5,000. It can be five to 10,000. Why, why are you accepting the 10,000, not the 5,000? Well, because I, I, in the genealogies, you know, kind of track the genealogies of the book of Genesis. We, we can't always know whether it's a father or a grandfather or a great-grandfather. So How do you reconcile the 5,000 to the 10,000? Uh, I don't why know. Why not? That, it's a million. Well, it can't be a million for one very important reason. Until How about Adam, the man, those who lived in caves and we have archaeological uh, that, That's proof. after Adam. Until okay. Adam, 
till Adam sins. You have no problem that man lived in caves and primitive no, lives. No, no, mm -hmm. no, not at all. I mean, look, Indians live in caves in Arizona hundred years ago. Here, yeah. but the point is this: the 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 death of the, the, the point at which death comes in, that's the first time there's death. In the day you eat, you die. Mm -hmm. That introduces death into humanity, and you already have Adam, fully man, and Eve, fully woman, and then you have death. If you're going to have a million years of evolution, you, you have to have had death for a million years. Mm. Then you're firm. You're not going to change in this. I'm just following the Bible. Whatever the... God says He created in six days, morning and evening makes up a day. Do you know any scientists who believes in what you believe? Yeah, we have a science department here at the college. Are they really scientists? They're all PhDs and, mm. and they're all from astute scientific uh, institutions, the universities all across America and Europe. And every single one of them is a six-day creationist. And I would say this... The, our students that graduate from our science department, 98% mm -hmm. of them that apply to graduate schools for science or medicine around America are, are accepted. Mm -hmm. We have a 98% acceptance rate, which wow. means mm -hmm. that's for doctorate programs, PhDs, and MDs. You're not teaching stupid stuff then? Uh, no. No. Even being firm, evangelical, conservative? We are, we are accredited by the same people that accredit UCLA, the University of California, the University of Washington. Mm -hmm. And we have the longest accreditation span, 10 years accreditation. They give every 10 years to the finest schools. We get the 10 years. That's lead me to um, another question, which is in my context, I faced a lot. We faced a lot as Christians. The, the Bible have been always accused by being corrupted. How do you answer this question? Your Bible is corrupted. Yeah, I don't have believe been the changed. Bible. Right, I don't believe that accusation that comes against the Bible, and it's made by a lot of people. It's, 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 it's made by everyone from Christian liberals, uh, Christian higher critics criticizing that the Bible is corrupted. I have, you mean uh, the, the, the criticism? Yeah. Is made by the criticism is made all over the place, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. because Satan wants to discredit the Bible. Mm -hmm. He wants to discredit the Word of God. What happens in the garden? Satan shows up, and what does he say? Oh, God didn't say that. And he's been saying that ever since. I have another question, John, similar to this. Um, I noticed that um, there's lots of movement, non-biblical, non-Christian, uh, homosexual movement, for example, and they want to stay religious. Uh, by saying they believe in God, they want to get married, homosexual, but they want to be church leaders. Why church? Again? Or why the church? Again, because in a false religion, Satan doesn't have to attack. He can just let it be what it is. But when it comes to the, the gospel, when it comes to Christianity, which has the gospel, that has to be corrupted. That has to be. And it, and it has to be corrupted in its theology, and it mm -hmm. has to be corrupted in its leadership. And so there's this... Y y Buddhism doesn't have to be corrupted. It's a false religion. Christianity has to be confused and corrupted. And so that's where the enemy makes his attacks. And he does it against our theology and at the level of leadership, and mm -hmm. that's part of the chaos and confusion. But why homosexuals, they want to be get married in the church? They can get married. I mean, like, personal point of view, I have no problem. If they get married, they live their life. That's their decision. I, I cannot stop it. Because but it does hurt me when they say it and they proclaim it in the church. Because after this they break, want validation. After this break, we'll come back to continue the discussion. نخرش في هذا الفاصل ثم نعود. Then back to the topic of homosexual in the church and married, marriage, homosexual marriage in the church. Well, again, I would say we have to go to the beginning. Okay. At the, at the very beginning, the first real social institution that God ever ordained. There's mm -hmm. no church, there's no human government, there, there's nothing in society but marriage. Mm -hmm. One man, first institution. one woman, the mm -hmm. first and foundational institution of all civilization. You leave and you cleave. You know, let a man leave his father, mother, cleave to his wife, one flesh. Okay, that's that's the building block of civilization. And of course, 
if Satan can destroy that foundation, the entire civilization collapses. Mm. And he's, he's succeeded in our culture to do that. In the name of freedom and tolerance, he has literally rotted out the foundations but of civilization. But I can tell that that have been always the truth through history, Pastor. Mm -hmm. John, it was always the truth in, in Persia and the Roman Empire, sure. and with the Greeks. Sure, made the Roman Empire fall. When, when marriage is destroyed, it mm -hmm. may be homosexual, so homosexuality, it might be divorce, it might be having you know, sexual concubines and a wife is nothing but somebody who cooks and washes clothes. Mm -hmm. Anything that destroys marriage uh, destroys a civilization. Do you hate homosexuals? No, our church is full of homosexuals who have been washed and sanctified. Every Sunday when I go to church, mm -hmm. the first guy I greet, the first guy that I see and greet is a guy converted out of a life of homosexuality. Do you believe like homosexual, can, can they change their lifestyle? I see lifestyle? them all the time, our church is there. But lots of them, they say, oh, uh, I have been created like this. But 1 Corinthians 6, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit says, such were some of you, but you have been washed. And he says, effeminate homosexuals, of course, any sinner can be transformed. If, if the sinner can't be transformed, this is not the gospel. Let, 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 me, let me go one step further go and say this. Mm -hmm. We, got to, we have to get rid of the word identity. You hear these people say, uh, I'm a, this is my identity. No, it's not. It's your behavior. Your, your identity isn't that simple. Your identity is a, you're a fallen human being. You're a sinful person whose sin manifests itself in multiple ways. Your mm. pride, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. You, you can sin on many fronts. You have chosen one particular sin to be the focus of your life, homosexuality. Mm. That's not who you are. That's what you've chosen to do. And the Lord can change you by changing your desire to do that and giving you the strength in the Holy Spirit. But the change is difficult. The change can be you know really difficult? painful. Yeah. yeah, you know why it's difficult? Because that's a powerful sin. That's a very powerful sin. Why? Because sexual experience is a powerful experience. And when you're converted, you still have a life of memories of the powers of that sin that get recycled. Tell me about the change. Tell me about the change. Especially, you're not one of those charismatic, Pentecostal, wife thinking, miracle today, sure. and that's it. Well, the change... How uh, can I, intellectual uh, yeah. ideas yeah, it's, change it's, people's lives? It's not so much an intellectual change. There is that. Do you, you believe in miracles, John? I believe in the miracle of regeneration. Okay. I believe in the miracle of... I, I, I know about your theology, and I, I, yeah. I mean this question. No, no, I believe in the miracle of regeneration. Here's mm -hmm. what happens. You get your old heart removed. Mm -hmm. Th that is the, the mind, the mm -hmm. seat of all your ideas and your emotions, and you get a new heart. So mm -hmm. now, I know what is wrong, and I know what is right. More than that, I have a desire for what is right. I long to do what is right. I, I want to honor God. So now I know this is a sin, and I don't want to do that. So it's your mind has changed and mm. your desire has changed. The is it based on a decision or what? How, well, how, it's how based on do? regeneration, a new birth, a new life principle given to you by God. What's That's my role it. in this? You're, 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 you're overpowered, okay? You're overpowered, literally you don't have a role in regeneration. Mm -hmm. This is a work of God. You are born again. Somebody else will new. call this the miracle. The miracle. Okay. But, but now mm -hmm. you need to cultivate those new desires by the means of grace, prayer, the Word of God, Christian fellowship. I've I never, mean, you, ha you have responsibility for this. Sure. I, I, look, I see, I see mm -hmm. guys, let's take homosexuality since we're talking about mm -hmm. that, who have been converted out of that. Mm -hmm. They hate it. They see it for what it is. They don't want to do it. They want to honor God. But sometimes they fall into that sin. Mm -hmm. And they you still accept them? Of course. That's what salvation's for. If it's mm -hmm. no good for when you sin, it's no good. That's what it's for. So they recover. They come back. It's their sorrow. So you see the transformation, first of all, in seeing it in a different way, seeing it as sin. Secondly, desiring something else. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, remorse over falling back into that pattern. That's the evidence of the miracle. John, it for requires the... requires obedience and faithfulness. For this uh, end of the, um, 
this uh, wonderful discussion. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to give you the freedom to express whatever you want to say to the viewers, to your viewers in uh, Forbidden Show, in Memnua, uh, in the Arab world. Well, I would just say what Jesus said. Um, Jesus met with the leaders of Israel, the religious leaders, and he said, uh, you will die in your sins, and where I go, you'll never come. And then he said it again, you will die in your sins. And he said it again, you will die in your sins. In other words, you'll die unforgiven, mm -hmm. and, and you'll never go where I'm going. And he was going to heaven, and he was pronouncing judgment and hell and then he said this, you will die in your sins, and where I go you will never come, because you believe not on me. The whole of the New Testament and all of Holy Scripture points in one direction. It points to Christ to believe in him as the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior, the only hope for forgiveness and salvation. Put your trust in the crucified and risen Christ. John, I'm going to talk to you in Arabic now, and I hope you understand. أعزائي المشاهدين نشكر دكتور جان على رحابة صدره في أن نناقش كل هذه التفاصيل فيما يخص حياته الشخصية نجاح هذا القص الذي استطاع أن يكون واضح متحدث بلغة الكتاب المقدس في لغتها ووضوحها إلى الحد الذي يعتبره البعض أنه متطرف في إيمانه لكنه في رسالته مليء لكن رسالته ملأ بالحب بحب المسيح الذي مات لأجلك أنت لك الحق ولك الإمكانية أن تختار أن تتبع هذا الذي مات لأجلك واسمه فقط يسوع المسيح في ممنوع نودعكم على أمل اللقاء بكم في حلقة قادمة